Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. From Hiroshima. So we actually came here the other day. We took a bullet train, another bullet train, over to here. Super quick trip. Very oh, yeah. nice. Very, very fast. Like yeah. an hour and a half. It was awesome. Yeah, and the weather today is absolutely lovely. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it's sweatshirt weather, to be no, honest. No, it's amazing. It feels like spring out here. Yeah, and it's it great. has felt like winter since we got here, y'all. So this is amazing. We are headed out to Miyajima today. That is the ultimate goal. There is an amazing Tori gate out there. I think one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful, in all of Japan. Yeah. Uh, it's very cool. We'll show you that in a bit. And they also, um, on the island, they have some delicious food that we'll be trying. Trying. I think there's gonna be a uh, deer roaming around. I'm very excited oh, yeah. for that. But one thing that you have to do when you come to Hiroshima is to at least take a stroll through the Memorial Peace Park. It's a park that's got all these different memorials that are dedicated to the atomic bombing and the victims of it. They also have a museum there that you can go to. I think it was under construction. Yeah, for a couple months it's being, I guess, I guess earthquake proof so it's completely closed down right now so we weren't able to go but we've been strolling around uh, looking at all of the memorials some of them are just truly breathtaking but we're gonna have to take a train then a ferry out to the temple so that's yes. where we're gonna head right now mm -hmm. On our way to the train, we just stopped by Hiroshima Castle. So this castle is actually a replica of one that was built in the 1590s. It was destroyed in the blast in 1945, obviously, but they rebuilt this replica in 1958. And it's very majestic looking. It's got a whole moat around it and everything. It's really cool. You can go up in this castle and do a tour. I think there's a museum inside. I can see some people up at the top, but we don't have time for that and we are running very late. So we gotta go catch our train. So the reason we are in a hurry is because this Tory gate actually sits out in the water. So when the tide come in, comes in, it looks like it's floating. It's supposed to be very beautiful, but the high tide is in one hour. So we wanna make sure we're out there so we can see it then. And hopefully we'll be able to stay until the tide goes out because then you can walk out to the Tory Gate. The shrine is on an island that's located just off the mainland and uh, it's about a 10 minute ride or so out there. But we were able to get a ticket for the train and for the ferry. Yeah, it's all the JR line. So actually, if you have the JR pass, you could do this all included in your pass. But check out some of the views. This is some insane nature out here. And there it is. Oh yeah, there's the gate right over there. made it to Miyajima and you guys you know they said there were gonna be deer all over the place here just kind of free roaming walking up to you but I just haven't seen any no I anywhere. think it, maybe people lied to us about it I'm not sure yeah I mean maybe we'll just have to keep our eyes open see if we see any deer for sure yeah hopefully well we'll have to get back to you on that one Guys, we were just kidding earlier. We've already seen like a hundred deer. <laughs> That's the first thing we saw when we got off the ferry. But be careful if you have food. We just saw one rip a bag off of a guy and try to get the content. Yeah, so. they're about as aggressive as monkeys have been at shrines in the, for us in the past. So you gotta watch so out for them. Cute. Oh yeah, oh. he sees something he wants. Oh dear. This is the Great Tori of Miyajima. It was built in 1875. Apparently it's made out of wood and it is 16.6 .6 meters tall. It's actually not buried that deep in the sand. Instead, it is actually filled with rocks, seven tons of rocks. It's also very popular, as you can see, many, many tourists around. But uh, if you, you can kind of snipe a spot like this and get a pretty good photo. There's also the actual temple over there. There's a huge line of people there waiting to get their shot from the pier there. And I would argue that you can probably get a better shot from here anyway. And you have to pay if you want to go out on the dock to get your photo in there. I think we found a better spot. We had Allison go out on this ledge right there. And then I took a bunch of shots from here. 
We're thinking that something turned out good enough to actually post on Instagram. By the way, it's cool. our Instagram is just The Endless Adventure if you haven't already followed us up on there. But <laughs> definitely head over there, hit the follow button so you can see how all these photos turn out. Yeah, we're, um, we're still a work in progress when it comes to photos, but I think we do a pretty good job. We're trying. <laughs> A tori is basically a gate that marks kind of the entrance into a shrine. It takes you from the mundane to the sacred. So that's kind of the idea is that you go through it before you enter the shrine. The oldest written record of a tori is from 922, I believe. Yeah. And you can find them all over Japan. We went to one in uh, Kyoto or a shrine there that had a bunch, hundreds if not thousands of yeah. little tories And everywhere. it was really cool because you could walk underneath them, mm -hmm. but it's a lot different than this one where you have this one big tori that everyone comes to see. They're all very striking though because they're bright orange. It's very cool. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? That's a zipper. I think he likes it. Can't taste that good. Maybe you dipped it in ramen earlier. Hey buddy. <laughs> Besides the Tori and Shrine, Mijima is also known for some delicious food items, one of which is oysters, which we're going to try right now. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are huge! They're grilled on a barbecue. Eric got one with lemon juice on it, I think. Yeah, Hiroshima and soy lemon sauce. juice. Yeah, oh yeah, you got the lemon juice and soy sauce. And then I got one with pepper and lemon juice. Look how huge these oysters are though. I don't know if I've ever seen them this big. I'm hoping that this pepper sauce isn't actually too terribly spicy. Dude, they're so massive. Are you supposed to steamy. eat it in one bite? I don't think I, I can. Careful, it looks hot. Wait. <gasps> It's very hot. <laughs> Let's give it a second to cool down. Oh my god. Oysters are so <laughs> unappetizing. Okay. Whoa. That was really smooth. Oh my gosh. They're really sweet and creamy. They're not chewy at all. And that pepper sauce is lovely. It's just a little bit of heat on there. And citrusy. Oh man. It's hot, but it's so good. I got the lemon and soy sauce ones. So they just pop them on the grill and then steam them inside the shell. They're properly steaming. I'm gonna go for the small one first. Mmm. Got some hard bits in there. <laughs> the flavor is really nice. It's not overly fishy. It doesn't really have too much of the seawater taste. You just get the lemon and a lot of the soy sauce, which is great. It's really not bad. Allison was saying that she still prefers them raw. I'll take them cooked any day. I'm just trying Allison's, you guys. This one is blowing me away. I mean, the oyster is cooked exactly the same, except this one has that little chili sauce stuff on there. It's so good. It's spicy, but it's also tangy and a little sweet. It's got everything. Mm. We got so excited with the Tori out there that we almost forgot to go to this five-story pagoda that the area is also known for, but check this thing out. Is this incredible or what? You wouldn't know when you're walking down on the streets below because it's tucked up behind everything and up high, but the views up here are amazing. It itself is fantastic. Yeah, this excellent is... photo spot and there's no one else around. There's just a couple other people. So we've been able to just sit here and take our time and take it all in. Yeah, it's, it's been cool. so great with the sun over there and everything. It's just beautiful and so peaceful. Miyajima has this walking street with all sorts of shops all over the place. They have souvenir shops, there's little bakeries, there's mostly a brewery. Bakeries. Yeah, mostly bakeries. There's a brewery right over there, all sorts of little places. This area is also known for these little maple leaf desserts called Momiji Manju, I think. Sounds right. <laughs> Hopefully close enough. But they should be these beautiful little pastries stuffed with different um, sorts of sweets or I think you can even do cheese or something, do savory. I think we're gonna stick with the sweet variety though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have got our little maple leaf filled pastry guys. I'm so excited to try these. I've seen them everywhere. Tons of these shops sell them. So we just kind of picked a random one. And they also have these big machines set up that show you the whole production line for how they make these. I got the chocolate one. That is what I'm going to be trying. If I can figure out how to open it. It's very soft and pillowy and delicate. I didn't know how thick it was going to be, but yeah. Shaped like a little maple leaf. <laughs> All right, let's see how much chocolate's actually inside of this thing. Oh, it's a lot. Check it out. Oh, man. Man, ooh, that is really good. You've got the slight sweetness and kind of dense layer of the dough on the outside, 
And then on the inside, you've got this delicious pudding-like chocolate filling. It's really good. It isn't too sweet for my palate. And they were only 90 yen a piece. 90 yen a piece, you can get 100 of them. Oh, they are so squishy. Oh, so soft, almost like velvet. It feels like velvet and it's squishy like a marshmallow. Oh, that is nice. The outside tastes like sponge cake mixed with a fortune cookie. And the inside is just absolutely delicious like puddingy custard, oh my gosh. I probably should have let you try the chocolate, but I ate Did the whole thing. Did you eat the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> you jerk. It's two bites, man. <laughs> oh man, well then I'm eating all this. You guys, we came here for the shrine, but this has turned into an accidental food tour. Because we still have more food to try. Yeah, there's so much delicious, <laughs> unique stuff to try in this area. Yeah, so the oysters, amazing. The maple leaf desserts, amazing. Yeah, really and good. And now we have another, actually kind of two dishes to try, but uh, I think our dinner spot is still open. A lot of stuff closes here early, so make sure to check the times if you want to come and eat here. Yo, we were just told we have 10 minutes to put in our order, and then they're gonna close, so good thing we know what we want. The place that we've come to is called Yaki Ga... Yak, yaki... Yaki Gaki no Hayashi. <laughs> My Japanese is really good, you guys. But we have placed our order just in the nick of time, and it should be here in a minute. First up, this beautiful dish is a nago meshi, which is broiled conger eel, I guess. So it'd be like a really long eel that they've sliced up and broiled in some nice sauce. I think it'll be like a sweet soy sauce over some rice. We got a set, so it came with miso soup and the beautiful, most beautiful little garnishes. Also, this area is known for their rice spoon, so it's pretty cool that we ended up getting one with our final meal here. They're known for so many things. I, so many things, and these aren't even all the dishes that you should try when you come here. Apparently they're known for even more, but our tummies are only so big. And the other dish we're gonna try are fried oysters, so they're just covered in like a panko breading it looks like, and they look really delicious, really fresh. They also give you a little oyster shell with it, with some uh, condiments in there, some tartar sauce looking guy, and then something else here that's not exactly sure what it is. <laughs> It almost tastes like ketchup. <laughs> it's definitely tomato-based something. I'm assuming there are bones. Uh-oh. You think you just eat them? Probably, uh, yeah. right? Probably, yeah. Whoa. There you go. Let's have this old boy right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the bones you just chew through. They're fine. So eel is actually one of my favorite things to get with sushi because they usually put the sauce on it and I am not disappointed by this. It's a little fishy but it's really nice. It's not chewy but it's got a, a nice texture to it, thickness. And then the sauce on the top there is perfectly sweet and salty. It's a really savory dish. I like it and with the rice it would definitely <laughs> fill you up. I'm gonna give these little oysters a try. They look really dang tasty. Now, are they gonna hold up to those steamed ones earlier? I don't know. Mm. Man, these are my favorite. And the sauce on there is super tangy, but you get a really nice oyster flavor in there. Not too fishy, not too seawatery. And then the really crunchy, crunchy outer layer, which is great. These are so good. They're like little oyster fish sticks. Super fresh tasting too, and hot off, hot off the fryer back there. Probably the most expensive fish sticks you'll ever eat. So. Yes, but worth it. Allison just tried the oysters. They made me curse. They yeah. were so good. She was cussing about it. <laughs> it was so good. I'll, for you guys, I will say, shoot, these are so dang good. <laughs> Y'all, the floating Tory is cool and all, but come here for the oysters. Those fried oysters. <laughs> So took me to another level. They were like the best fish sticks I've ever had. Oh that's God. that's how they tasted. So that is going to do it for today, I think. We came back to the Tory just to watch the sunset. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. The tide has started going out. There yeah. are people congregating everywhere, slowly they're, they're making They're chasing their way. the tide out to the gate. Yeah. So eventually the tide will go all the way out there and the gate won't have any water around it but and I everyone will be able to go out to it. I have a feeling that won't happen until maybe the sun actually sets. Yeah, cause... so you gotta sit here for a long time yeah. for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed coming out to the island today, exploring the gate, the area around it, all the food. Yeah, I would definitely recommend if you have the time in the area to spend a day or 
to here. There are these amazing mountains behind us and apparently there are some lovely hikes up in there. We of course didn't have time, but yeah, there's if, so much you can do out here, yeah. so much stuff to try and I was honestly surprised. I had no idea that it was going to be that interesting, that much stuff to do, but you it was spend a lot of time out here. It was such a fun day. So yummy, so beautiful. In our next video, we're going to be doing our final tour with Magical Trip. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys have enjoyed the last two that we did in Osaka and Tokyo. This one is going to be bar hopping. Yes, which I'm very excited <laughs> yes. about. Food and alcohol, two of our favorite oh, yeah. things. We're going to be drinking some sake for sure. Yes, and we're going to be trying some amazing local dishes. I'm very excited, some that we have never tried before. Good night, adventurers. We'll see you on the road.